All right, hey, my name is Reed Bailey, and this is a video about statistical test selection for single factor statistical test. It's part of a series of videos called Intuitive Statistics, where our real aim is getting you to understand when to use which test, and assuming that you already know about the different tests. To go along with this, we have a guide that maps out when to use certain tests available at the URL shown here. And you'll see we've grouped them by parametric tests like t-tests and ANOVA, which are appropriate for your dependent variables that have an interval property, so interval or ratio scales that are normally distributed. Also have non-parametric tests where your dependent variables ordinal or it has that interval property, but it's not normally distributed. You know, tests like Mann, Whitney, and Wilcoxon. And then finally, when your dependent variable is categorical and you're counting things up, how many there are, their frequency or their distribution among different categories, that's the third section, tests like test of proportions and chi-square. So let's get to it with the example we're gonna use, which are results from 5K races. In particular, we have sets of data from the turkey trot in 2019 and 2020. And for each person, we know their finishing time and place for each year. We know the shoe brand that they wore, their age, their gender, and if they wore these shoe inserts called race to win inserts. So let's imagine this is our data set and we'll use this throughout the video. All right, let's get into it with when you would use parametric tests. The way we're going to work this video is I'll pose a question up here in the top left and we'll look at the data and think about what test we would use for it. So here a question is, is the average finishing time for males the same as the average finishing time for females in 2020? In this case, our independent variable is gender, male or female. And our dependent variable is finishing time. So our finishing time is a ratio variable and we have two levels of our independent variable. So we would use an independent samples t-test. Now this does assume that the times for each group um, uh, is a normally distributed set of times. So among females, if you looked at all their times, they would be normally distributed. Among males, among all their times, they would be normally distributed. What about this question though? I wonder if the finishing time is the same for each different brand of shoes. So now our independent variables changed to shoe brand, but our dependent variable is still time. And the only thing that's really significant that's changed here is our independent variable doesn't just have male and female as options. It doesn't have two levels. We see it has at least three, A6, Nike, and Brooks. And in fact, it has five levels. Let's imagine Adidas and New Balance are also shoe brands that were included as, as types of brands in the independent variable. As y'all know, independent samples t-test can only work for two levels. In this case, we need anything with three or more levels for the independent variable, we need analysis of variance. In this case, we're also making a normal distribution uh, assumption, and it is that the residuals are normally distributed. We'll talk about what to do if these aren't met when we get to the non-parametrics. I wonder if the average time for all runners is less than 30 minutes in 2020. Well, now we just have a dependent variable, which is the time. There is no independent variable. We're not splitting our data into different groups. We're just saying, is the, on average, is it less than 30 minutes? So here we're at a one sample t-test, assuming that the time again is normally distributed are one all of our times together. And because the question says uh, is less than 30 minutes, this would actually be a one-sided test, a one-tailed test, given that we said less than 30 minutes is the question. Our dependent variable has always been time. It's that's an interval, it's a ratio variable with the interval property. And so that's why we can run these t-tests and ANOVA. Ah, now we're getting to these race to win shoe inserts. We're trying to figure out how would we determine if the shoe inserts affected someone's ability to run a 5K race. So we could think about doing this lots of different ways. Like we could look at the average finishing times for all of the data 
upheaval with race to win inserts and compare it to all of those who don't have race to win inserts. If we did that for 2020, for instance, it'd be really similar to say our first test with male or female has two levels. You had the inserts or you didn't, where our inserts are our independent variable and our dependent variable is time. But there's another way that we could run this also. What if we looked at people who started wearing the inserts between 2019 and 2020? We can compare the race times from before using the race to win inserts to the times after. In this case, our data is going to look a little bit different. So let's say now you see our data set, uh, person 2401 isn't in there because they didn't wear inserts uh, in 2020. And but 5321, our first row, and 0115, our, our third row, and somebody further down, 2235, these are all people who didn't wear it in 2019 but did wear it in 2020. And we see their times for each year. Now, in this case, our independent variable is with or without inserts, and our dependent variable is actually all of this data is part of our dependent variable, those are all the times. All right, so here we have our two different situations. We either have each person being measured once on the left, either wore it or they didn't wear the inserts. And on the right, we have each person being measured twice, both with and without the inserts. On the left, that would be an independent samples t-test, just like it was for gender back at the start. On the right, it's a paired t-test because we're measuring the same person twice. In terms of the statistical test alone, the independent samples test is not as strong. And that's because think about some runners are finishing the race in 35 minutes, other ones are finishing it in 18 or 19 minutes and all in between there. And when you're doing an independent samples t-test, that variability between people is not isolated from the variability between whether you had with or without inserts in your shoes. Whereas with a pair test, it's a, considered a stronger, the test itself is stronger because it does isolate the change in times related to insoles from the change in time between different runners. So if somebody whose time is 19 minutes goes to 18 and a half at the third 30 second improvement. Someone whose uh, time was 35 and a half minutes, it went to 35 minutes, it's a 30 second improvement. It's a 30 second improvement for each person and that difference between the 19 and the 35, that variability is not factored in to the pair t-test. Now the experimental design could have issues with the pair t-test because there could be any number of other things that changed between 2019 and 2020. And so it also relies heavily on uh, for this really to be a strong design, which is not the main focus of this talk, of this video is that you have randomly assigned whether someone gets the insoles or not so that all those other differences between 2019 and 2020 are evenly distributed among the people with the insoles to the people who didn't get the insoles in the second year but that's for another video for now just know that the paired t-test statistically is stronger because it isolates the variability to just the change not the variability between the different subjects all right now we're going to start looking at non-parametric tests the nice thing about non-parametric tests is if you know when to use ANOVA versus an independent samples t-test versus a paired t-test, then you know when to use the correct non-parametric test. The main difference here with non-parametric tests, as we said initially, is that your dependent variable now, it's either that it has that interval property, so it's an interval or ratio scale that's not normally distributed, or your dependent variable is ordinal. And if you would normally have run, say, a t-test, but you have a non-normally distributed variable or an ordinal variable, now you would run a non-parametric equivalent of a t-test, which we'll see what that is. Here we say, is the average finishing times for males the same as the average, average finishing time for females in 2020? The same question we started off with. But let's say you've determined that the distribution of times for females are highly skewed. So a parametric independent samples t-test isn't appropriate. The equivalent non-parametric test 
is a man Whitney test. The same independent variable and dependent variable as the first time. Now just our dependent variable. Let's say we ran the analysis to determine that it, that for females it was not normally distributed. We run a man Whitney non-parametric test as the appropriate test. And you're going to see some parallels here between the first set. Just because I said it's the same thought process that you would have used when determining which parametric test to run. The only change is the type of dependent variable that you have. Now, is the average time for all runners in 2020 less than 30 minutes? But let's say you've also determined that the data is skewed heavily to the right. Now, before, we would have run a one-sample t-test for this. Here's our only dependent variable. Remember, we aren't splitting it by an independent variable, but now this isn't normally distributed. Well, the appropriate test now is a Wilcoxon test, uh, and you would evaluate it to see on a one-sided basis, is, is it less than 30 minutes? Now, there's a little bit of another change here. Is the average men's finishing place different than the average women's finishing place in 2020? Independent variable, gender. Now our dependent variable is the finishing place. And the big difference between using finishing time and finishing place is place is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It's an ordinal scale, not an interval scale. So we're back to using Man Whitney. The same thing we would have used if we had used, in our first example under non-parametric, if time had been our dependent variable and if either of the distributions for men or women had not been normally distributed. I wonder if the places for people wearing different types of shoes are all the same in 2020. So whether you wear Asics, Nike, Brooks, Adidas, New Balance, are you all finishing in roughly the same place? Our independent variable is shoe brand, our dependent variable is place. We would have normally run uh, an ANOVA for this if our dependent variable had been had that interval property and been normally distributed, but it's an ordinal scale. So now we run a test called Kruskal-Wallis, which is the non-parametric equivalent of ANOVA. And we're back here to looking at this idea of race to win shoe inserts and trying to see if they had an impact on finishing place. In this case, we're just going to treat it as paired data, where we're looking at the same person twice. And we're seeing their finishing place in 2019 and their finishing place in 2020. Here's what that data could look like. And a difference here is that in most statistical packages, there's not going to be a way for you to run a paired Mann-Whitney. That does not exist. A paired t-test exists, but a paired Mann-Whitney does not. So what you do is you do the equivalent of what a paired t-test does. And a paired t-test, all it does is it takes the difference in performance from one measurement to the second measurement, and then it runs a one-sample t-test to see if that ultimately is different than zero. So here what you do is you would take the difference, and you can see uh, you would manually calculate or use your spreadsheet or whatever to calculate the difference between the two measurements in 2020 and 2019, which is the with inserts and the without inserts. And it looks like, for instance, for the first person, their place uh, got five worse when they had inserts. The second person, they got 30 worse when they had inserts. The third person, it got six better when they had inserts. And you run then the equivalent of a one sample t-test on the difference. Now, we just saw the equivalent of a one sample t-test in non-parametric terms is the Wilcoxon test. So you run the Wilcoxon test on the differences to see if the median place is different than zero. So that's our run through parametric and non-parametric, and you can see how they're parallel with each other. The only difference is, is your dependent variable type have that interval property and is normally distributed, run a parametric test. If, however, it either has that interval property and is not normally distributed, or if you're dealing with an ordinal variable, run non-parametric tests. As we move to frequency and distribution tests, that parallel isn't there anymore. It's kind of a, a different type of test completely. And we're dealing with a change in dependent variable, though.
It's not that it's an ordinal dependent variable or an interval dependent variable. It's that it's a categorical dependent variable or really anything that we're treating as a category um, for the sake of the analysis. And it is statistical tests for those types of dependent variables that we'll cover in part two of this video.